what should HR leaders and please extend it to people analytics teams do to help prepare their organizations for the future where there will likely be an increase, well, there already has, but an increase in remote and hybrid working. Let me start with something tactical, but I think is super important. And then we can move to like a strategic answer. I think tactically having a robust survey team is just paramount. When things are changing as quickly as they are in this environment, and we are going into unknown areas, right? I mean, this year was an unknown, David, just in terms of like the pandemic and like the, the speed at which change happened during the pandemic and exponential growth and exponential change. I mean, a decision that you thought was preposterous as a CEO one week might have been the norm the next week, literally, right? And so at that rate of change, you really do want to stay closely connected to how your associates are feeling and, and hear from the voice of the associates. And even at Capital One, where we, you know, we do quarterly surveys, quarterly is not enough this year. I mean, so much happened from quarter to quarter. And so we instituted pulse surveys and more periodic surveys and touch points and, and focus groups. And, and so building out a really robust capability to hear the voice of your associates is something I would just recommend that I think is not only was not only incredibly useful for us and other companies during this time, but I think leaders will find that useful going forward in general, right? Because the pace of change in business just is so fast. Yeah. So that's that's one I would just kind of lead off with. Now, if we move kind of more strategically, I think there's uh, a lot of kind of strategic considerations that we should think about as we kind of maybe get out of the pandemic in 2021 and moving forward. One of the things we've noticed is during this kind of year, we've actually been pretty productive, right? A lot of the knowledge workforce has actually been pretty productive. But our hypothesis is that that productivity is going to wear off. Yeah. And, and, and when we think that it's going to wear off, wear off for two reasons. One is the intellectual vibrancy of working together in physical spaces, right? Uh, especially for no, the knowledge workforce. The ideas that are exchanged, the connections you make in the hallway that generate future conversations and future ideas, the ability to whiteboard and really like scratch out like new, new ideas, the ability to get context from people, again, through random conversations, that is missing. And there's, I think, a lot of academic research that shows the importance of that. In, um, in, 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 the, in the knowledge workforce. So there's kind of this intellectual thing that again, we've been able to like pepper over for like nine months, 10 months, but like, I don't think that is going to sustain itself. And then there's the emotional connection, right? Um, I just had a chat with a colleague today where he's starting to, you know, he brought up the really interesting point of like, he's starting to feel like a lot of the connection that he built with the team, uh, you know, over the last couple of years, is starting to wear off. And this might be a little bit of, not a tremendous amount, but a little bit of trust that's being lost over time. Um, and people getting a little bit more curt with each other. Um, it's, it, interactions being a little bit more transactional because you can just hit a button and that person is gone, right? Yeah. And um, again, a bit uh, hard, but it might be worth thinking about, hey, can we measure some of these things of loss of trust and so on and so forth? But even otherwise, I think there's good reason to suspect this is the case. So I say these two things to say, despite kind of our view that, hey, productivity might not have taken a huge hit in 2020, I absolutely would not recommend a like fully flexible workforce. But, like if the CEO came to me and is like, Google, what's your recommendation? I would say absolutely not. Like back to, and, and when we're back to normal, I absolutely would not recommend a fully flexible workforce. Right? Does that mean though that, we, that doesn't mean though that we might not have to be a little bit more flexible, yeah. right? Yeah. And then does it mean like we might not have to think about, hey, what does remote actually mean? Remote means different things. Remote could mean I'm working from Wyoming, or it could mean, hey, I'm working from Philly and I can get down to DC in two hours and I can do that every day, right? And those are vastly different things, right? And, and remote means different things for someone who's an individual contributor on a software engineering team versus a people leader who leads a team of 50 people and like, right? So I think we have to dig under remote flexibility for whom, for when, and, and really develop some principles around this. And that's what I would recommend, not just, that's what I'm going to recommend for our leaders, but also for anybody out there who's listening is like, really like getting underneath this a bit and double clicking and triple clicking around some of these concepts and then developing a framework and set of principles that you feel um, comfortable with moving forward. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe via your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.